there's always someone somewhere, sometime, somehow, it's going to tell you what's wrong with you. Maybe a doctor, maybe a lawyer in legal matters. Maybe your polit political party affiliate and your favorite candidate is telling you what's wrong with you. Maybe it's your teacher telling you what's wrong with how you haven't accomplished your goals and so you're failing in a particular area, not accomplishing the standard that has been set for you to achieve in order to pass a class. But there's always going to be someone who's telling you what's wrong. The thing I like about God is that he's always telling me what's right as well as what's wrong. But he's always giving me a solution. There's always been with God a solution for me. There's never been any time that God has said, you do it, and then makes it impossible to be done. Now, I find whenever there are people out there that are condemning the world, they never give them a solution. They never offer the means with which that person could solve the problem, whatever it may be. Whether they think that someone should be kosher, or whether someone should keep the seventh day, or the tenth day, or the thirtieth day. Whatever day they think that someone should keep, they never offer a solution. They just tell you to do it. They don't say how. They don't say why. They don't say who told them. They just say do it. As though we should accept their authority for us to do it. And that always bothered me because, you know, it was like God never spoke to me that way. God loved me in such a way that no matter what it was, he always worked with me to accomplish his purpose through me. He always took the steps out of his way to meet me beyond halfway, but met me all the way. In other words, right where I'm at, he met me. I didn't have to go halfway. God came and found me. And so, I don't quite understand how people can get caught up in some of these other things that they always tell you to do, when really God just wants you to listen to him because he's got a solution for you. I know for me today, I haven't felt good. and I know that there's spiritual battles going on and after yesterday of course you know I come down into the valley after a mountaintop experience like I had yesterday and today has been like wow man I got hit from every angle and bam 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 boom I got knocked out out of the fight out of the race flat on my face down for the count and so you would think aha cast back the demon, or say in the name of Jesus for the Satan to be gone, or some other fool notion. But when I don't feel good, I turn to my Lord. I turn to Jesus. I ask Jesus, God, what? <laughs> What's going on? And sometimes he answers me. Whenever you ask God something, he promises he will hear it. How he answers is between you and him, but he does answer. It is the Lord's battle. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who revere and worship him with awe and reverence, and each of them he delivers. Psalms 34.7 In the Old Testament, people carried banners when they went to war, sending the singers and praisers into the battle first. When the tribe of Judah sang, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. See Chronicles 20, 21. The enemy was so confused, they were all slaughtered and self-defeated. See verse 22. When King Jehoshaphat prepared for battle, he took position of getting on his face to worship God. See verse 18. If you have battles to face, get in the position of warfare and just worship the Lord. God's response to our worship is, be not afraid or be dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I see too many times people taking the battle for themselves and making a mess of things. 
Now, I don't know about you, but when I don't feel good and things are hitting me from left, right, sideways, and every kind of which ways that you imagine, I don't go to a prayer chain. I don't go to a prayer wall. Matter of fact, I don't go anywhere but God. And I say, God. I don't go anywhere but to Jesus. And I say, Jesus. I don't do anything and but ask the Holy Spirit. I say, help me. And I don't understand all these people that run around telling you to pray for this and pray for that and let everybody in the world know what it is you're praying for in order for you to get what you think you're supposed to get from what you thought you were supposed to say because you didn't know what it was that God was doing in the first place. So you're asking for something that you might not be asking correctly, but you might be asking a miss, but you're not going to let the Holy Spirit decide because you've already told everyone in the world what it is and how you expect the answer to be made. I don't think that's the right way to pray. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But you know, for me, maybe I'm right. <laughs>